Hello and welcome to my review for Out of Love by Hazel Hayes. I am actually going to be doing public book reviews more now. I've been reading a lot more and actually thought why not actually participate in the bookosphere. The bookosphere, that's wrong, that feels weird. Today I'm going to be reviewing Out of Love. This is a YouTuber book, but not quite. It's a book by a YouTuber. It doesn't necessarily mean it is a YouTuber book, that kind of standard trend of a YouTuber you know, writing a book because they're famous. Maybe there's a bit of that here, but we'll, we'll get on to it. Out of Love is by Hazel Hayes, a British vlog, Irish rather, vlogger, YouTuber, video filmmaker, etc. And I've been a follower of hers for many years, and I enjoy her work mostly. Her book? I don't know how I felt about her book. <laughs> Out of Love is a romance story that is told essentially in reverse, chronicling first the breakup and then going backwards in time towards the meeting of two people. Essentially basically just an author insert who doesn't have a name, which is just like boop on the nose and a author insert for her ex-boyfriend. I have a lot of notes that I wrote down while I've been reading this. I read primarily at breakfast and then some points during the day, sometimes with lunch. Uh, we and my partner both work from home, so we have very long breakfasts and we spend about at least an hour reading. And what I do is I write on my little notes app on my phone and I've wrote about two pages of notes. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna be going through it. And to chronicle my Review of Out of Love by Hazel Hayes. I will be drinking some Lagovillain, Lagovillain, La Lagovin 16, which is not actually my favourite, but palatable and enjoyable. And I picked it for that very specific reason because that is what Out of Love is palatable, enjoyable, but not my favourite, and problematic. I'll just talk a couple of things about Out of Love that I found really weird. There's a lot of times in the book where I put the book down and went, what on earth just happened? And things that felt really strange, that felt like someone isn't a human writing this. And this is both myself and my partner Olivia's review. Expect actually pretty much all the reviews that are on this channel are kind of a distillation of both of our reviews. She just doesn't like being on camera. So basically just consider me an amalgamation of the Sam Olivia pairing. My main frustrations with Out of Love primarily are tied to the fact that it feels weird. We are presented with this love story that has ended at the beginning, which is a very cool concept, but one that's been done many times before, the idea of starting a relationship in reverse or showing a relationship in reverse and showing its downfall. That is not new, it's not original, but not everything has to be original. You don't lose points for that. But my problem with it is that it doesn't it actively detracts from the book. The story is made worse because of this. We understand that the relationship is over and we see the inherent toxicity of the relationship. And yet we then go through her life in reverse, exploring that toxicity, but seen through the lens of hindsight almost, but from the reader's perspective and not the author's. And my main frustration is that it feels unnecessary and entirely detracts from the value of the text. The value of the text is ostensibly that we are trying to both learn self-worth, mental health stuff. That's the problem. There is no clear and overt reason for this text. By the way, I hope you love my hair. I'll be trying to do different hairstyles every single book review. This is, my hair's really long right now, so I'm just kind of like holding it down with not the top. I'm trying to make that up. Why not? My major frustration with this book, besides inaccuracies and kind of pointlessness, is that the author watched 500 Days of Summer and then just wrote that. That's, that's the book. It's 500 Days of Summer kind of written worse. I'm not saying it's badly written. There are actually a number of times that I think the author really does make some beautiful phrases and beautiful lines. And I'm, I'm a big guy for turn of phrases, I love that. In my writing, I always try and focus on that. I just don't think I'm very good at it. But I always do focus on those lines, those little, ooh, mm, that's good. You know, those little lines that make you think about life in a new way. And there's like a couple times, and I think Hazel Hayes does do that. Frankly, if someone were to say that about me as a writer, and I'm barely a writer, if someone were to say that about me, I would be like so happy. So definitely she should feel proud of herself for that. But the rest of the writing feels odd, and it also, going back to my point in 500 Days of Summer, it's basically just 500 Days of Summer. They even, it, it's even said specifically 
that they watched, like, there's two different distinct references to 500 Days of Summer, both at the beginning and end of the book. Really just be like, hey, hey, where, guess where I got this from? I mean not so much in the chronology, because 500 Days of Summer does not do a reverse chronology necessarily. It actually kind of rolls back and forth across different days within the 500 days that the main character Tom knows summer. And that's a very cool device, even so, even changing days just to demonstrate depression and anxiety and anger at the situation. But this is told in a strict reverse linearity. You have to go back, right? There's no jumping around whatsoever. It's, it's like she took the idea of 500 Days of Summer and then just kind of actively made it worse and applied it to her own situation. But I mean, that is, that is writing, right? That is, that is being an author that is making things, is taking things and applying it to your own situation. And that's totally fine. But it just makes it seem worse. Uh, kind of like, it's kind of like pears. It's very pear-y. I like it but not that much. I think it's better exemplified by the ending. The ending of the book is just, it just ends. I don't understand why the ending of the book ends. And I, when I say that, every book has to end. I understand that. Every tale has to stop being told. But the ending is important. The ending of Out of Love, spoilers, it ends. It's, oh, well, I met them, oh, and that's it. Because it's a strict linearity. There needs to be a purpose to being given the beginning of the relationship. We need to know and understand, I'm putting my drink down so that I can articulate with my hands how angry I am at this. There needs to be an established purpose for the chronology, the reason for this time, this backwards in time phenomena that we're reading. There is no reason, it's just the way they wanted to tell it, but it makes the situation worse. I honestly feel like the book would just be better if I just read it the other way. It feels like that there was a direction that the ending was going to be, and the publisher or someone else didn't like it, and the author changed it. I feel like this was meant to go somewhere, and there was meant to be this epiphany or inherent value to reaching the end, or rather the beginning of the relationship, but the end of the book, but there is none. It just ends, and you're like, oh, well, I kind of wish I hadn't read that. It was really weird and dissatisfying and a, a little frustrating. Even How I Met Your Mother, one of the worst endings in television and possibly story, modern storytelling history, even that still tries to create this sense of why I'm telling you this story, why I'm explaining to you my damn entire sexual conquest history. God, that show is dumb. Because for the purpose of establishing that he's actually secretly in love with Robin, uh, and the kids, and thus the kids give him his blessing to go and be with her. It's dumb. It's stupid. And it's bad. But they try. There is a purpose to it. You walk away from it going, that's why I watched it. I don't know why I read Out of Love. There's no purpose to this. And that's my inherent frustration. I think the author intends it to be this kind of general blanket explanation of mental health and exploring anxiety and depression and how that could not be helped by a toxic relationship. But the toxicity within this text is really weird. It's just odd. There's just this kind of, oh, this is toxic. Oh, and I'm messed up mentally. And it just keeps happening. I just, I can't express the strangeness with what some characters' actions are. At one point, case in point, she goes to visit her partner in Paris it's pretty obvious that her partner is falling out of love with her. Uh, out of love. And she decides that she wants to be around him, but he doesn't want to be around her, so she has an existential crisis in Paris, gets granted a job over the phone, hooray, and then goes to a bar and hooks up with a girl in a toilet, brings her back to her boyfriend's hotel room, in an attempt to initiate an uninvited threesome, and then has lackluster sex the day afterwards as apology for putting them in that awful situation. I feel like the author is trying maybe to say that, like, the toxicity is kind of both there, and that she also is pretty garbage, but the reason she's garbage is because of poor mental health and abuse. But that argument falls as well, because then that would mean that his toxicity and abuse is explained away by his parental abuse. Like, there's, there's themes, and there's touches, there's these little, oh, we're all messed up, we're all abused, or oh, we're all damaged in our own way, or oh, we just met at the wrong time of our lives. These are different things, and it's all just kind of jamming in there. And it just feels discombobulated. It's not to say I didn't like Out of Love. It's witty. There's some poignancy to it. I just realized I looked down at the cover, and that's what Matt Haig described it as, sparkling with wit and with poignant emotional reality. That probably just came to my head, but I would agree. There's wit, and there's poignancy. But 
there is also a lot of frustration. And I'm going to I'm gonna read for you a couple of my most frustrating parts. And I'm going to read them to you verbatim because I wrote these down in a fit of irritation. And this has been, this is an Olivia irritation. She has a panic attack in Paris. So what does she do? She gets on a boat. Who gets has an anxiety attack? and then gets on a boat, a confined space over water. Maybe she just finds water liberating, but goddamn, if I was having an anxiety attack, and I have had anxiety attacks, I assure you. Are there many booktubers or people who read lots of books who don't? That's sad. Am I a booktuber now? Not really. But you just wouldn't do that. There's a framing device within the framing device where she tells the story of what happened in Paris to her best friend, who, by the way, is a token black character, which feels odd. And obviously the purpose of their their character is just to be the perfect relationship. Oh, we have a great relationship to juxtapose against hers. Fine, whatevs. But she's telling, the whole way through the book, we get a kind of reverse linear narrative. But then randomly you get the Paris story, and she's telling it to her friend, like it's a story, but linearly. And the friend keeps interrupting, like, hey, come on, when are you gonna get to the good stuff? And it's like, oh, I'll get there in a second. And then it keeps jumping back. Why is that there? Just remove that whole bit. It doesn't add anything. It actively detracts from the very little tension that is in the scene. Just get rid of it. Was it word count related? Did the publisher say that the narrative was cluttered and needed some kind of exploratory framing mechanic? It's odd. What a weird section that was. She flies to Paris from Heathrow. What? Who flies to Paris from Heathrow? She lives in London. I can't remember if it's north or south. You gotta get the. You have to get the tube to the tube line that runs to Heathrow. I've, I'm, I've lived, I was born in London. What, she lives in London, Hazel Hayes. Why would you fly to Paris? She had to get the tube to St Pancras to then get the tube to Heathrow, to then fly from Heathrow to Chardegar Airport, to then get the train from Chardegar Airport to Gardenot, which is the main station in Paris. That's ages. Just go to St Pancras and get the Eurostar it takes you to Paris in like three and a half hours and it goes to Gardenot. There's no, no Londoner would fly to Paris. What, what flies to Paris? I mean, I mean maybe now, uh, <laughs> my Eurostar. No one does this. It doesn't make, it was, I, was, I was brought out of it because it made no sense. It's literally half the money, half the time and better. There's a weird section where she just goes into an Italian cough, like ice cream place and starts ordering ice cream in Italian out of nowhere. She just starts doing that. Why? Who does that? Who goes into Marlebone and goes to an ice cream place and goes, ah, I don't speak Italian. You wouldn't do that. That is so weird. What a weird thing for a person to do. But it's not highlighted as weird. The weirdness is the fact that she's doing it and someone else speaks Italian. They're like, oh, we both speak Italian. What? Why don't you speak Italian? When would you have learned Italian? There's a flight that's mentioned that isn't possible. It mentions a New York flight lands in Heathrow at 3 a.m. You can't land at Heathrow at 3 a.m. That's not, I think flight stop one or 11.30. You can't, you can't land at Heathrow at 3 a.m. So that flight wouldn't be possible. Couldn't you just research that? It's just a lot of these kind of small niggling little inconsistencies that feel weird and that take me out of it. But that might just be me. That could just be my interpretation of it and I could just be Lame. There are also a number of instances where the author is far too much tell not show. Despite the fact that the main character is presented as being this wholly, frankly, damaged and mentally, not impaired, but you know, needing help. She's anxious, she's depressed, she has problems. Yet somehow she seems to have be gifted with clairvoyance. She can just kind of, ins with a few seconds of conversation, she can inspire someone to spill their deepest and darkest feelings. And it'll be like their entire character's purpose in a line. I, I wrote it down, I wrote it down. Quote, you think my mother would rather I was miserable with her than happy with her. Bro, yeah, that's your whole character. But you just arrived at that conclusion, but then never come back to that conclusion again, because that's midway through the story. So either side, yeah. Hazel Hayes thinks Dark Knight Rises is the best Batman movie? That better be your main character and not your opinion because that's wrong. That is wrong. That is just not okay. Dark Knight Rises, the best Batman movie? Get out of here. That invalidates your opinion. Okay, that was a pretty long rant. Um, I had to like take a few seconds to breathe there. Fundamentally, I did enjoy Out of Love for what it was, which is a poolside read. I think that's the goal. It's a poolside read. I just, I was hoping it wasn't a poolside read. I was hoping it was something that delved a bit deeper into, I don't want to say delved into mental health, because frankly, every book is dealing with mental health. And that's a good thing, but I, 
I don't know what I wanted. It's hard to say what I wanted from this book. I just know I didn't get it. I didn't receive what I was hoping for with Out of Love, and I found it frustrating to read it. I liked it, but kind of like a candy bar that has too many dry, crackly bits in it that cuts your mouth as you chew it. It satisfied that sweet tooth that I was looking for, but man, chewing it was... Not a pleasant experience. That was my review of Out of Love. It was probably rambly. I don't think I'm very good at these whole book review things, but I'm gonna keep doing them because I want to. And I think I have a cool little background. I think this is nice. And that's basically the only reason I'm doing this. I read a lot, so you should watch it a lot. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you do leave a like below. No wait, leave a like and then comment below and let me know your thoughts about Out of Love and whether or not either of us will have you read it if you're a follower of Hazel Hayes and her kind of cadre of, cadre, cadre? Cohort of, you know, London YouTubers. We're all a little bit depressed. <laughs> There's a lot of them, I think. There's quite a lot of them. Maybe that's just our generation, to be honest. And also whether or not you actually enjoyed the book or not. And if you disagree with me, I think the best part about these kind of things is the disagreement that they can create. I want more of that, so please hit me in the face with your adamant refutation of my opinion. Make sure you subscribe if you'd like more lifestyle-y stuff. This is a channel. <laughs> it's a lifestyle channel, I guess, now. There's going to be cooking and there's going to be book reviews. One video each week. Really hope I stick with that and I don't sound like a hypocrite, because that's my ostentatious plan. Let's hope so. I was Aldrin, I'll continue to be. I don't know if I'm going to continue that as my outro, but thank you very much for watching my review of Out of Love. Bye-bye. It's a little cloying. <laughs>